Welcome back, dear learners. Let us complete William Wordsworth, the tables turned. In the last video, I had covered four stanzas of the poem. Now let's let's cover the remaining four stanzas of the poem. She has a world of ready wealth. She means nature has a world of ready wealth. Ready wealth, you can say ready stands for practical. Wealth here stands for knowledge. Our minds and hearts to bless. And he says that since the, uh, since the nature is full of practical knowledge, wealth means knowledge, knowledge is valuable. That's why he calls the knowledge just actually wealth and ready means practical one, useful one. That's why nature is all the time capable, capable to bless us. Bless us means give us, give us, give our heart and heads what? Practical knowledge, the knowledge that is very useful for, for our life, for making our life or for making the problems and complications of our own life is to easily tackle or handle them. Spontaneous wisdom. What kind of a wisdom? Spontaneous something that is natural. Something that comes effortlessly. Wisdom, intelligence. Breathe by health. Breathe by health. He means to say that if actually we spend our time in the nature, we shall have health. And if we shall have health, definitely we shall we shall gain wisdom. We shall, we shall get wisdom. How we shall get wisdom or we shall gain wisdom? By the knowledge, that practical knowledge that the nature bestows upon us or will bestow upon us. And that knowledge that will be bestowed upon us by the nature will, will end up, will end up giving us wisdom, intelligence. See, truth breathed by cheerfulness. And if we are healthy, we shall be cheerful. If we are cheerful, we shall, we shall have truth, truth, honesty. And all these will come to us only by spending time with nature. So he says, that nature is full of practical knowledge. We should stop reading books, means one and all should stop reading books. He does not mean to say that we should absolutely stop reading. No, he means to say that we should take a break. We should allow our bookish knowledge to mingle or mix with the practical knowledge that, that the nature will give us if we give time to nature and that mix that mix of the practical knowledge and the bookish knowledge can help us or will will help us to resolve this to resolve the complications and problems of the life that will help us to make a living much better or good that's why he says that she has a world of ready wealth, our minds and hearts to bless, spontaneous wisdom, breathe by health, truth, breathe by cheerfulness. And the last line of the fifth stanza, one impulse from a vernal wood, vernal, something that is related to spring wood jungle. And he says that a single impulse, impulse a kind of emotion or a kind of a thing or kind of a spark, you can say that, a single spark that, that we can get from nature is capable enough in teaching us in teaching us more than the sages can teach us. Sages, just a highly intellectual people who are blessed with the knowledge of the knowledge of the religion and spirituality and so on and so forth. So he says that a single thing that we 
get from their nature can teach us more than more than thousand books and more than those people who are called says because of their high learning or because of their high quality of knowledge see he says says may teach you more of man of moral evil and of good so he says one little thing one little one little thing or one lesson of the nature can help us understand human life much better much better and that one single one lesson of the nature can help us understand this human life can help us can help us better understand what is good what is bad see this moral level means can help us know about something that is bad and something that is good then all sages can so he says that a single lesson one thing from the nature one thing from the nature can teach us a lot about life can teach us a lot about good and bad can give us this kind of a, this kind of a discerning ability to us to better understand what is good and what is bad and and this kind of a, this kind of a discerning ability we can never ever get from sages highly intellectual people of the world he means that's why he says that stop reading books come out and and give your time to the nature spend time in the company of the nature and you will learn a lot you will gain a lot and what you will gain you can never gain by by spending time with the sages by spending time with the with the intellectual people of the world so he says the nature by all the way possible is thousand time better thousand time greater in comparison with the books in comparison with the in comparison with the sages is a highly intellectual people of the world that's why he says he is asking the people asking the people of his own time not to spend a lot of time reading books but to spend a lot of time in the company of nature see this sweet is a low low you can say this is a kind of a song which nature brings so he says that see the song of the nature is always sweet in comparison with all other things all other man made things nature has no alternative but unfortunately we we meddle with the nature we meddle means we interfere with the nature we interfere the affair of the nature we do not allow nature to work to work by its own way and it's all because of that we disturb the we disturb the process of the nature or we disturb the nature and by disturbing it we because because the damage to the nature and it's all because of that we have to suffer see what he says or meddling means interfering intelli- intellect miss shapes the beauteous form of things and it's so since we meddle with the affairs of the nature we interfere or intervene the nature the natural process of the nature the natural process of the learning it's all because of that we cause a lot of damage to to none other than ourselves he says see may shape the beauteous form of forms of things we murder to dissect and that's why we cause a lot of damage only to dissect dissect to examine so he says that one and all should one and all should adopt positive means natural means simple simple and crude mean to learn rather than to apply one's own intellect because wherever one's 
wherever one starts applying the uh, one starts implying the reason reason you can say reason and uh, reason and this and that unnecessarily it somehow hampers it somehow hampers the natural process of learning so here he is recommending the people to learn in a natural manner to learn in a natural manner and that same kind of a thing was of for the same thing actually just uh, Jean Jacques Rousseau was also advocating for that one and all should should learn a lot in a natural manner in the in the open field of the nature see this we murder to dissect enough of science enough of science and of art so he says that stop reading science stop reading these new just uh, new modern just uh, modern branches of studies like science and art this was the time when people were giving more importance to science and art and here william wordsworth is asking them to shun it to avoid it and to embrace the natural process of learning and that will come by spending time with the nature the more one spends time with the nature the more the more one the, the more one gets the practical knowledge and that practical knowledge is capable enough in shaping the human life in making the misery of the human life less and in making an and and is capable to make the human life much better it means somewhere down the line he is indirectly talking about the talking about the drawbacks talking about the drawbacks of the industrialization and urbanization that had a kind of a negative impact on on the life of the people at that time see this enough of science and of art close up those barren leaves he says he said books are barren barren means fruitless means he he says that the knowledge one obtains by reading book is actually fruitless is unproductive no use particularly for making the life better and in resolving the complications and problems of the life means the welfare of the man lies in the company of nature the welfare of the man is sorry the welfare of the man actually does not lie particularly for the man if the man goes away from nature so he somehow wanted to check that mass mass departure from the villages to the city see close up those barren leaves come forth and bring with you a heart that watches and receives and he says that one and all means man should develop a kind of a understanding develop a kind of a develop a kind of a thing means man should be very much humble man should be very much res receptive and if the man is very much receptive he or she can very easily very easily allow that practical knowledge that that comes from the nature to go straight way into his or her heart and head and allow that practical knowledge to get settled there and allow that practical knowledge to shape his or her life and his or, or her being and his or her career why because the real and the true benefit or the welfare of the man lies only and only in the nature so he says that man should come man should come out 
man should come out in the company of the nature or should come out in the open lap of the nature without any pre-planning without any pre-planning with his and her heart absolutely open and head absolutely open and allow the things to come and settle straight away in his heart and head whatever comes from the nature but if a man comes with pre-planning a man will never learn and a man will never get or will never be able to get the blessing blessings of the nature so he says come come to the nature how with with the heart that with the heart and head that is ready to receive and ready to learn and ready to get what the nature is ready to ready to bestow upon so i hope my dear learners you may have better understanding of these last four stanzas of the poem now let's look at the figures of speech used she has a world of ready wealth it means nature has been personified he has he is here just uh, visualizing nature imagery visual imagery here he is visualizing nature as a as a kind sweet loving loving woman full of practical knowledge and understanding so this uh, personification is used visual imagery is used our minds and hearts so minds and hearts to you can say that it is stand it uh, or this stand actually this stand for this uh, human anatomy it means you can say that here mind and heart stands for human it means synecdoche is used you can say that spontaneous wisdom breathed by health or in spontaneous wisdom breathed by health truth truth breathed by cheerfulness fine one impulse from a vernal wood okay one impulse from vernal wood may teach you more of man so see more man means alliteration of moral evil and of good moral then all these sages can so comparison is sweet is a lore which nature brings sweet is a lore lore which nature brings so see just sweet is i i i it means repetition of i sound it means assonance or meddling intellect actually intellect is not meddling we are actually we meddle actually intellect does not meddle but actually we meddle so it means it means transferred epithet is also used here misapplication of adjective miss shapes the beauteous forms of things fine beauteous miss fine we murder to dissect enough of science and art close up those barren leaves close up those barren leaves fine come forth and bring with you a heart come forth and bring with you a heart that watches and receives so i hope you may have understood these figures of a speech that i have here mentioned and i hope you must have understood the last four stanzas of the poem provided that you have some complication feel absolutely free to let me know thank you for watching